The full lotus pose, or Padmasana, is one of the most recognized, important, and for some, the most difficult yoga position to master. Sitting in full lotus, more so than any other seated position, gently forces the spine into a healthy, perfectly vertical alignment, similar to a seated soldier at attention stance. Sitting this way improves posture, spine and leg flexibility, allows for extended periods of seated meditation, and is the best pose for pranayama deep breathing practice. The full lotus reduces back pain, stimulates the abdominal organs, which improves digestion and reduces bloating, and regularly sitting this way helps lengthen the piriformis muscle, which provides relief for sciatic nerve pain. Unfortunately, you can't just will yourself into a full lotus pose, and you have to do some other poses first to get yourself in there. So I've got three yoga poses that will help get you into doing the full lotus. So these first three poses are all much easier, but even these three poses, some people are going to have issues doing these three initial poses. So first of all, don't try to do the full lotus immediately. You can injure your knees, your knee joints, severely. So this is all these poses, all yoga poses you want to do slowly. If you ever feel sharp pain, stop immediately. As you're deepening and lengthening poses, you do want to feel a slow, dull pain as you relax into the stretch, but you should never feel a sharp pain or anything approaching a sharp pain. So every pose, slowly put yourself into them. And if at any point as you're putting yourself into the pose, you're starting to feel pain, stop. That's as far as you're supposed to go into that pose for today. So for example, here's the first pose. You lay on your back and bring one knee up and then put the other foot on that knee. Now grab your shin and gently pull your entire leg towards your chest. Now the more you do this, the more you're going to feel the stretch in the opposite knee. Just do a little bit more every day. You want to hold each stretch for at least 20 seconds, and at most, as much as you care to do for the day. You can hold each pose for many minutes, slowly deepening them, but only do however much is comfortable for you. So then switch your other leg, bring your other knee up, put your other foot on it, grab that shin, and pull it towards your chest. Now the second pose that will help get you towards a full lotus is the following. Put the bottoms of your feet together and splay your knees out to the side. Now at first, you may barely be able to even get your feet together. And if you can get the bottoms of your feet together, your knees will probably be up at a 45 or 60 degree angle and you will not be able to get them down on the ground. So, as you practice this pose, you're trying to do two things each time. After you put your feet together, you want to pull your feet as close to your body as you can, right up to your pelvis, if possible. But at first, most people are not going to be able to do that. And the other thing is to get your knees all the way to the ground. Now both of these are going to be very difficult, probably impossible, and don't strain yourself to try to do it at first. Yoga is all about small improvements over time. So each day, just do a little bit more. If you can't get your feet together today, get them as close as you can. So once you can get your feet together, then work on bringing your feet closer to your pelvis. Once they're as close as you can get, push your knees down gently with your hands, 
just a bit more than they can go naturally. Now eventually you'll get pretty close to the ground, and at that point I'd say you can even ball your fist and then push your fist onto your knees to get that final inch or two onto the ground. Now the third pose you can do to help stretch yourself into a full lotus is the following, where you, it's like a quarter lotus. <laughs> stretch one leg out, but then bring the other foot up to your hip in the lotus position. Again, slowly. For some people, you are not going to be able to bring your foot all the way up to your hip. Just getting one foot on top of the other knee might be a challenge for some people. And if that's where you're at, just stay there. Stretch like that. If you can get past your knee, pull it up over your thigh. If you can pull it up to your thigh, pull it all the way up to your hip. Now, if and when you're able to get your foot all the way up to your hip, the next thing you want to do is to push gently down on the knee and push it down towards the ground. So the dual action we're doing here is pulling with the foot and pushing with the knee. Pulling the foot up towards the hip and pushing the knee down towards the ground. And again, this is a dangerous position to do with any sort of force. You want to slowly get yourself into these positions and only gently do each motion. Once and if your foot and knee is in the right position, then you can bend down and try to reach your other foot on the straight leg. And do the same for the other side. Once you've mastered this quarter lotus position, you can try the half lotus, which is putting the first foot up on the hip with that knee on the ground, and then with your extended leg, just tuck that under the first one. That's a half lotus. Then the full lotus is just taking that tucked under leg and putting it on top of the other and fitting the foot into the hip position and then pushing that knee also all the way down to the ground. So when you're able to finally attempt the full lotus, you'll start with that half lotus, put one foot on one hip, push that knee down, and then pull the other foot slowly up over the knee. Hopefully you can push it towards the thigh and keep going until it's in the groove of the hip. And then when both feet are in the groove of the hip, you can push both knees down to the ground and straighten your back out all the way. And in time, you will eventually have a perfect full lotus yoga pose.